Hello, everybody. I'm Frank Fagany, Artistic Director of the Brussels Jazz Orchestra, and I would like to welcome you again to the second episode of our live streaming session from paper to stage. I'll take you through the creation process uh, from a blank sheet of paper to the final performance on stage. You will see how I deal with the arranging process. Some topics of this journey will be more technical, but I'm sure that there will be enough to take away for everyone. So what's the plan of tonight? Um, I would like to start with this, uh, a small recap of the first episode uh, to make sure that everybody is again with me. And then we have the uh, theme, um, reharmonization of the main theme. And then we have the development of our timeline. And then uh, we're gonna talk about a new theme that I would like to add to the arrangement. And of course, there is a Q&A. Uh, &A, uh, you can always send questions through the chat box um, and certainly I will respond to any question. Um, I'm writing an arrangement based on a song written by the French poet and singer uh, Serge Gainsbourg and that song will be part of a brand new concert program that BGO is developing and will premiere next season in collaboration with the French jazz vocalist Camille Berthaud and the song is called Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais. Um, it's a classic song released in 1973. The original version has a simple regular beat and at a tempo of 150 beats per minute. And this song is written by using the ABA uh, song form, a uh, very usable song form and has 32 bars. And the lyrics exist of four verses, so four times A, A, B, A. To fresh up your memory, I'll let you listen to the first verse of uh, this song. Um, it's the original verse version using the original harmony. You also can follow the lead sheet. I will, um, you will see that in a minute. Um, there's a voice part in the, in the, um, part there is a bass and some rhythmic uh, support and you will hear the talented singer Naima Yoris so uh, let's hear it Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais Que tes larmes n'y pourront rien changer Si bien vers l'aile au vent mauvais, je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais. Tu te souviens des jours anciens et tu pleures. Tu suffoques, tu me l'as mis à 13 ans, qu'à sonné l'heure des adieux à jamais. Je suis au regret de te dire que je m'en vais. Je t'aimais, oui, mais. So that was uh, the original um, lead sheet, the original song. Well, at the first verse of it, um, as you can hear and see, uh, it's a very simple but nevertheless beautiful melody supported by a very basic harmony. Um, the original song was written for uh, voice, acoustic guitar, bass, piano, and some percussion. And the instrumentation um, of a big band, where I'm going to uh, arrange for, is much more expanded. We have a lineup of, of five saxophones, uh, four trombones, four trumpets, a guitar, a piano, a double bass, and drums. And in jazz, there is a room for solo improvisations. So that gives me, as an arranger, the opportunity to create and to add additional material, which can be additional um, melodies or additional counter melodies or new rhythms or a new harmony uh, or backgrounds for solos. Um, anything is possible. The original song 
uh, takes like three minutes and 30 seconds, but my version uh, will have a total duration somewhere between eight and nine minutes. So plenty of room for, uh, to, be, to be creative. Um, one of the possibilities is to be creative and fill these eight, nine minutes is to reharmonize the original harmony. So first of all, what is harmony? Well, it's not easy to explain, but it, harmony is, is or starts there where a number of different tones are sounded simultaneously together. So in the broader sense, harmony means dealing with sounding notes together within a piece. Um, basically, there's tonal functional harmony or modal functional harmony, or there is like this open tonality or atonality harmony. Uh, by reharmonizing, I add more harmonic, harmonic colors to the or original uh, melody. That means I, I add more combination or, of notes or, or maybe extra notes to, to, to support the melody. And I'm able to connect more fluently one chord to another not like just very vertical harmony, but I can make it sound like it goes very fluently from one bar to another. I can create more harmonic tension also by adding uh, extra or uh, notes or com combination of notes whenever I like to do that. And when adding interesting harmony, I can translate that harmony into voicings played by the horns in the orchestra. For example, each uh, saxophone in the section plays one voice when, and when the full section, uh, meaning the five saxophones, plays, plays each their unique voice together, you get a voicing. And the instrumental soloist gets more harmonic information to improvise on. So when you add or, or create more harmony, you, you give more information to the soloist. Um, reharmonization will work well whenever the musical ear understands the purpose of the reharmonization. More specific in more specific in tonal music, any new added chord, meaning harmony, has a functional purpose. So the, the harmony used in a piece that has a more open or non-tonal harmony uh, will be more judged uh, by the color of it. So it's a, it's a very important uh, aspect of, of, of uh, creating an, uh, or writing an, an, an arrangement or creating more material, material around um, a melody. A chord can be added as a new color or tension to a certain moment, but also can have a purely harmonic function. For example, when you add a dominant chord that leads into a new tonality. So it, it predicts in a way the new uh, harmonic uh, tonality of that moment. It all, it all has to do with the knowledge of the theory of harmony and good ears and also some taste to do so. A lot has to do with uh, good craftsmanship too, knowing uh, when, where, what to use. So I will now uh, go to my screen and uh, share with you um, the re- harmonized uh, version of the same uh, melody of the same piece of course and I will um, explain afterwards what what we uh, are doing um, maybe I'm gonna do first maybe I'm gonna do first uh, just explain about the harmony and the versus the reharmony maybe that's a little bit uh, more practical so I made a, a part of the first eight bars of, uh, of the piece. No melody, just a harmony and some bass added to it. So this is the original piece, original harmony and some bass. You can see that every two bars, there is one chord, one chord here, B flat. It's a, it's a triad, meaning three notes together, sounding together. In this case, these three notes, a D, a B flat and an F for two bars and then going into the third bar and fourth bar again with one chord, D minor, three notes also, a triad, going into A minor, three notes, two bars, going into E flat major, one bar, going to F one bar, 
back to B flat. So we're uh, again in the beginning of the piece of the of the second A, in fact. But with the reharmonization, as I tried to explain uh, earlier, I added some some uh, notes to it. So reharmonized. So for instance, first of all, I use more chords. You can see that four bars, and I have all already uh, five chords here instead of two chords over the, those four bars. So on top of that, I added some extra notes, like here, it's a B flat major seven, meaning not three notes anymore, but four notes. The seven means it's, it's four notes sounding together. Same for G minor nine. And if you can read music, you, you can see that it's exactly the same notes, but in this case, it's a B flat in the bass going to a G in the bass. And that means another a same chord with another bass note, meaning G minor nine. Nine is the ninth note um, of the scale of G minor. Going into D minor seven, again with a seven meaning four notes instead of three. Going into the, the same uh, chord, going into a uh, second, the E minor seven, again, four notes but that one is really uh, uh i wrote this one because it connects really the next no, uh chord meaning the a minus seven a good thing is let listen let let us listen to to the first bars of the original let's see So that's the original, really. The, is the first uh, eight bars of, uh, of the song. So this one is now, I added a reharmonization re to it. So that's the real harmonization. And maybe if you saw the, the first episode of, of uh, this um, session, uh, I tried to explain harmony or, or arranging um, by uh, renovating a house. Like the house, the original house is the song that you have to arrange. And then when you start to um, add some notes, it means you add some colors to it. So you, you're gonna paint one wall in another color, or you're gonna use uh, some, like here, an extra chord. So it means maybe you have um, a certain point, you have a, a different floor built, you know, to, to, to go from, from one point to the other, another color of the, of the floor maybe. It's, it's, you can uh, compare a little bit with that kind of things. Um, so, so that's the, a little bit about how it works with the reharmonization of harmony. Uh, now I would like to go effect to the, the piece itself. And you can hear uh, Naima singing the same melody, of course, but now uh, accompanied by, um, uh, by the reharmonization. Um, all right, here we go. Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais Que tes larmes n'y pourront rien changer Comme d'ici bien vers l'aine au vent mauvais Je suis venu te dire que je m'en vais Tu te souviens des jours sans sien et tu pleures Tu suffoques, tu blémis à présent Gassonne et l'heure Des adieux à la mer Je suis au regret De te dire que je m'en vais Je t'aimais, oui, mais so that's the reharmonized version of it. And that's the basic um, chord progression that I'm going to use during uh, 
uh, my arrangement. So um, I, I would like to, to uh, add a thing again, and that's if you want to check out Naima Yoris, because, because she's a great singer and really like her, 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 her way of, of dealing with it, with music and with, with her voice, I suggest to visit her Facebook page. We'll add that link of her page in our um, social media. So, uh, are there questions? I will check. Um, now there is one. Rim. Uh, hi, Frank. Do you actually write each part entirely in this particular arrangement, or is it rather a base that leaves much space space for improvisation? Well, it's mainly written out by myself. The only the only thing, uh, because it's 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 a written down arrangement. Everybody has his part. I wrote it down. It's it's it will. I mean, extract from a from a score part. Um, at a certain point, there will be some space for a soloist, in this case, a uh, saxophone player, who will uh, have the liberty to improvise on the chords, uh, accompanied by by the orchestra. It, it will go a little bit later on to the timeline, and you will see that I added some some um, backgrounds to. To the to the solo or uh, going into um, going into the tutti. So, but mainly the arrangement is uh, quite it's quite long and a lot of information uh, is written down. Um, of course, um, in the early days uh, we had really like the head arrangements, as we call them, where uh, the band played a riff. Uh, one section played a riff against another section or played another riff and then it's really uh, by uh, by ear and uh, uh, f by heart so it means uh, that that's why they call it an hat arrangement but in this case and most case of the arrangements contemporary arranging it's all uh, written down written down okay um, so um, so, like I mentioned, I was supposed to go to the timeline now, to, so to uh, give you some information about uh, that one, because uh, if you remember last time, I had this timeline written down where I, you know, it's to have a plan to, to make sure that that plan uh, stays there. It's not a sacred plan. You can change after a while, but it's, um, but it's uh, a way of, uh, maybe have your ideas uh, on, on a row, you know, that you know what you're doing. And if you don't know anymore what to do, where to go to, you can go back to your timeline and check out what the general or the first idea was. Um, so um, in this case, uh, like I said a minute ago, th there is this, this um, saxophone solo starting. Um, at letter, let's see, ah, here, letter L starts here, and at a certain point, the saxophones are coming in as a backing to support the soloist. And the soloist that goes on on letter O, and then at a certain point, other instruments are coming in. I didn't write that down yet, but trumpets and trombones are coming in to support and to push the, 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 the soloist to the to the to his final uh, notes of his solo into uh, the uh, tutti that starts at letter S. So it means that solo starts in a letter L, goes all the way to here. Then there is this repeat sign back to K. Still solo, 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 solo. When we come here the second time, the backings of the saxophones coming in to O, going further to O, P, Q, R. R is like, like an extended ending where the solo goes really and pushing the soloist up to the end where it goes down, where, he, where, where, it lays it do, where he lays it down, uh, you know, like it is this diminuendo sign that means that um, the tension is decreasing into the tutti and the tutti started letter S. Tutti, uh, I mean with a tutti, I mean a complete orchestral uh, passage. Everybody's playing together written out, of course, but completely uh, reharmonized, for instance, also uh, different kinds of rhythm uh, figures, different kind of melodies, uh, really completely developed. 
The other thing that I would like to do, and that's why I took that timeline again uh, in this session, is that I would like to, to add a, a different mood to it at a certain point. Um, as I explained last time, uh, Gainsbourg wrote this song, uh, Je suis venu te, te dire que je m'en vais, um, when he got inspired by a poem called Chanson d'automne by the French poet uh, Paul Verlaine. And I think it might be very interesting to, to add Verlaine's poem in my arrangement. Uh, that way I can make a combination of Gainsbourg's comp composition and the lyrics with the original poem, which gives me the liberty to compose a new melody for this poem. I can add it to the arrangement as an extra part, as a, in a different tempo, in this case, a, a, like a three, four, a ballad, slow ballad uh, tempo. Um, it's, it's at the same time, it's, it's, it's a new story to create some space in between the original melody uh, of, of, of the original song, but also between the orchestral tutis and the solo of the saxophone and, and the backing. So a moment to, to in the arrangement to relax a bit. Um, I'll share my uh, screen now um, with uh, Chanson d'Automne. Um, uh, and while listening to the melody, you also can follow uh, the score. Uh, today, uh, with this piece, with this ballad, I want to intru introduce you to a great singer, Vanessa Mates. Uh, I got to know her through BGO's project, Someday We'll All Be Free. That was a project that we did on, on our social media last April, where she contributed with her version of, uh, of this song. And I was really blown away when I heard her singing and thought of her to sing this new um, melody. So let's see, uh, this is uh, Chanson d'Automne. So that was um, uh, Vanessa with uh, Chanson d'Automne. Um, if you want to know more and hear more about um, Vanessa, visit, please visit her Facebook page. Uh, we also add a link uh, in our comment, comments uh, on our uh, social media. Uh, and I would like to thank both of them, Naima and Vanessa, for their effort and contribution to this uh, project. Thank you very much. So uh, is, are there any other questions at this moment? Not. So yeah, um, 
in, in this case, the, 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 this new melody is really like a point where, where, where of relief, really like, well, because after, afterwards, after this part, um, it starts to build up again. If we go back to the, to the timeline, you will see that um, after uh, this point, it builds up. That's the end where we stopped here and it builds up into uh, the groove again, like a double tempo in a, in a different key. It's a tutti, uh, orchestral tutti with, with a groove. And it builds really up to the third verse, but not really the third verse in the beginning, but from the bridge on. So um, to have this, this always this a little bit more and more and more, you know, so it goes all the way to for verse uh, verse four, um, because, but there at the end of just right before verse four is this relief, this decreasing the tension because I would like to have a duo playing like the, 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 the vocalist and piano, in this case, Nathalie Laurier, who will play in duo the first eight bars of the last verse going into the second verse uh, the second part of the last verse with a rhythm section going into the coda. So um, next time, because we, we start, we're already at the end of this uh, episode. Next time we're going into the development of, uh, rhythm, of rhythmic figures and we'll start to analyze the score uh, that I'm working on concerning the arranging techniques. Um, we're not going into really the, 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 the very, very theoretical thing because maybe that brings us too, way, too, too much, uh, it's too specialized maybe. We'll see how it will work out. It depends also on the questions that, that I get at that point. But um, we'll gonna, you're going to hear the full uh, arrangement then. Um, so, yes, if you enjoy this live stream, please like it and share this video. And I invite you to subscribe to the BGO Facebook page to stay informed on new live stream events. And the next episode uh, of uh, From Paper to Stage will be announced on BGO social media and on our website. So thank you very much. Stay tuned. Take care and good night. Bye bye.